students welcome to the channel pharma for you so today in this video we are going to cover some previous year based questions for your gpet exam with detailed description so students if you are watching the video on our channel first time so please subscribe and hit the bell icon for getting more updates on our upcoming videos so so first question is the range of absolute bioavailability is and the options are option A is 0 to 1, option B is 0 to 100, option C is minus 1 to 1, option D is minus 1 to 100. So the range of absolute bioavailability is and the correct answer is 0 to 100. The range of bi absolute bioavailability is 0 to 100. So let's discuss with the help of explanation that actually what is bioavailability first. That bioavailability is means the rate and extent of drug reaches to the blood that is systemic circulation means rate at what rate and the extent means at what amount the drug reaches into the blood that is our, in our systemic circulation. And what is the absolute bioavailability? Absolute bioavailability is the amount of drug from a formulation that reaches to the systemic circulation relative to, relative to an IV dose and it can range from 0 to 100 percent which is the correct answer. So moving on the next question which one of the following is the largest hip bone and the options are option A is ischium, option B is ileum, option C is femur and option D is calcaneus. So which one of the following is largest hip bone? So the correct answer is ileum. So in most of the government exams there is a basic question scheme from these topics like this with that which one of the following is the largest hip bone. So students you have to just tick ilium. So let's discuss with the help of explanation that hip bone consists ilium, ischemia, ischium and pubis which make it the largest one where the largest bone in hip is ilium, largest bone in human body is femur and largest bone in the foot is calcaneus largest bone of the carpal bone is capitate option and the largest seesaw c moid bone bone is patella and the smallest bone in the body is steps so students these are very some important points which are just taken from various uh, uh, books so students uh, please write down in your notebook because these points are asked in various government exam which will help you and attempt your questions. So next question is tranexamic uh, acid is and the options are option A is antithrombotic, option B is antifibrinolytic, option C is fibrinolytic, option D is steptic. So tranexamic acid is a antifibrinolytic agent. So let's discuss about some uh, tranexamic acid that tranexamic acid is an antifibrinolytic and it competitively inhibits the conversion of plasminogen to plasmin students just write down the mechanism of action that it inhibits the conversion of plasminogen to plasmin that is an enzyme that degrades fibrin clots and fibrinogen and other plasma proteins so Tranexamic acid is an antifibrinolytic. So moving on the next question that formation of Okazaki fragments occurs in and the options are option A is transcription, option B is replication, option C is translation and option D is reverse transcription. So formation of Okazaki fragments occurs in which process and the correct answer is that in replication there is a formation of Okazaki fragments. Students note down that these uh, that is the formation of Okazaki fragments occurs in replication process. 
Now the next question is the chelate EDTA can be described as what type of chelating ligand that is a bidentate B is tetradentate and option C is hexadentate and option D is tridentate. So the chelate EDTA can be described as what type of chelate ligand and the correct answer is that it is a hexadentate ligand. So let's learn something about the EDTA that how it will be hexadentate. So students just focus on this paragraph which was written in uh, that EDTA or ethylene diamine tetracyclic acid has lone pairs of electrons on two nitrogen atoms. When it releases four hydrogen from carboxylic acid group, it gets four extra unpaired electron or four oxygen atom means two, two, uh, two lone pairs are this and the four are this. So these are these total six lone pairs of electrons bind to metal ion at six points. If there are six lone pairs or six, uh, six binding sites, so there will be a chances of six receptors to bind on that or six points. So molecules that bind to multiple points in a coordination complex are said to be chelated. So it's an unchelating agent and it's a hexadentate ligand. So the EDT is hexadentate. Moving on the next question that propanolol. Propanolol is a reduces myocardial oxygen combustion consumption option B is beta 1 receptor selective blocker option C is has intrinsic sympathomimetic activity option D is is a hypotensive agent in patients with normal blood pressure so what is propanolol actually is and the correct answer about propanolol is that it reduces myocardial oxygen consumption and how it is possible it possible is like this that is, this is an except uh, that propanolol reduces myocardial oxygen consumption and it is a pure beta adrenergic antagonist and is non selective that act is antagonist at beta 1 and beta 2 receptors. So it does not cause change in atrial pressure, heart rate and cardiac output so which leads to the reduction in myocardial oxygen consumption. So students it's all about this question moving on the next question that which of the following is a drug considered as potassium sparing diuretic and the option A is trimetrine option B is chlorothiazide option C is mannitol option D is furosemide so which of the following is a drug considered of potassium sparing diuretics we have to tell about that which of the following is a potassium sparing diuretics so the correct answer is that the trimetrine is a potassium sparing diuretics. So students or friends, let's learn about something uh, diuretics. Here we have just detailed description that that the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. These are all the uh, diuretic agents. That what are the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors? And under carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, there are these are the drugs: acetazolamides, methazolamide ethozolamide or dichloroparamide or chlor uh, amino uh, phenamide are the drugs of carbonic anhydrase inhibitor and what are the mechanism of action of this is that it acts on site 1 that is proximal convoluted tubule and inhibits hydrogen formation and promote potassium and calcium potassium and uh, sodium excretion so students it is a very easy I hope that uh, the carbonic anhydrase these are the drugs and these are the mechanism of action of carbonic anhydrase inhibitor if it is clear let's discuss another one high ceiling loop diuretics and what are the drugs on this in this category is that uh, these are the drugs butamide, butanide, furosemide, ethacrinic acid or torsemide or musolimide or ozolinone so these are the drugs and what are the mechanism of action of high ceiling or loop diuretics that it act on the site 2 that is thick ascending loop of Henle and inhibits 
सोडियम पोटेशियम एंड टू क्लोराइड आयन सिंपोटर दिस इज द मैकेनिज्म ऑफ एक्शन ऑफ लूप डायरेटिक्स एंड दीज आर द ड्रग्स नेक्स्ट वन इज दैट थाइजाइड एंड थाइजाइड लाइक डायरेटिक्स दीज आर द ड्रग्स क्लोरथाइजाइड्स और हाइड्रोक्लोराथाइजाइड्स एंड व्हाट इज द मैकेनिज्म ऑफ एक्शन ऑफ दिस दैट इट एक्ट ऑन साइड थ्री एंड इट एक्ट एज डिस्टिल कन्वर्टेड ट्रिब्यूल प्रीडोमिनेंटली एंड कॉर्टिकल पोर्शन ऑफ thick ascending leap uh, limb of loop of henle and which inhibit the sodium and chloride symporter so students i hope that these points are going to be clear from now onwards next category is potassium sparing diuretics which is asked in the question potassium sparing diuretics are that uh, aldosterone antagonist Uh, spinalactone candidone or epinephrone and uh, epithelial sodium channel blocker are trimetrine and amyloride Th these are the sub two class aldosterone and epithelial sodium channel blocker these are the sub two class of potassium sparing diuretics and trimetrine is the answer of potassium sparing diuretics which is asked in the question and what is the mechanism of action of potassium sparing diuretics it acts on site 4 that cortical collecting ducts and distal convoluted tubule and what it does it does inhibition of sodium and water reabsorption so students there are four categories i hope that um, their drugs and mechanism of action are clear from now uh, by seeing this slides now the next question is use of isoniazid is restricted due to and the options are option a is ototoxicity option b is hepatotoxicity option c is neurotoxicity option d is bone marrow depression so use of isoniazid is restricted due to which of this side effect so use of isoniazid is restricted due to the hepatotoxicity so that use of isoniazid is actually restricted due to the hepatotoxicity and the principal toxic reaction of isoniazids are peripheral neuritis and co-administration of pyridoxin prevents symptoms of peripheral neuritis that we can prevent the peripheral neuritis by a co-administration of pyridoxin so now the next question is match the drugs with appropriate test for identification cardiac glycosides ergot alkaloids Quinidine sulfate and the camphor. So these are the some uh, drugs names and uh, alkaloids, and we have to just uh, match with the appropriate test for identification. That which uh, drug is uh, which a uh, test is used for the identification of which drug. So for the cardiac glycoside, there is a Lieberman Burchett test, and for ergot alkaloids, p dimethylamino benzaldehyde. or for quinidine sulfate there is a fluorescent test with dilute s2so4 and for camphor there is a 2,4 dinitrophenyl dinitrophenyl hydrazine so students please write down these test because uh, sometimes the question may also ask in niper exam uh, directly from these uh, these test so please write down in your notebook and get revise on time now the next question and last question of this video is Panexadiol is a constituent of, and the options are: option A is ginger, option B is jetamancy, option C is ginseng, and option D is pepper. So, panexadiol is a constituent of which drug? And the correct answer is for this is ginseng. That panexadiol is a constituent of ginseng. Let's discuss with the help of explanation that panexadiol, panex ginseng, or panex quinonefolium. family belongs to areliaci contains steroidal and penti pentacyclinic triterpenoid saponins and when panexoside or ginexosides gives on a hydrolysis panexadiol and panexatriol and oleonilic acid and 20s protopanexadiol and paper uh, nigrum that is belongs to piperacy contains pyridine piperidine alkaloids such as piperidine piperine and volatile oils where 
ginger belongs to gingiver officinal officinal is family gingivaceae contains volatile oils with monoterpenes at last is monoterpenes philandrines are these these are the classifieds on this monoterpene sesquiterpenes and these are the drugs so students this is all about this video i hope you just like the video so please subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for getting more updates on our upcoming videos thanks for watching